विश्वोदिशु हे तमे कं गौरी पार्थी विदित तत्वनकर्ति मयाश्रयं विगत मयमचित बोधास्वूपमल हि शिव नमा वंदे शिव प्रकृतेरनादि प्रसन्त मेकं पुषोत्तम हि स्वया कृत्स्नमेद नभो वदंतास्ति वंदे तरस्त निजगूप शिव स्वतस्रष्टुमीद विचे जगंती नित्यं परिथो भ्रमती यधौ चुंबकलोहवत्त I bow to Shiva, the consort of Gauri, the sole cause of the origin, sustenance, and dissolution of the universe, who knows the reality, who is of endless renown, who is the support of Maya but is free from her influence, whose form is incomprehensible, who is unsullied, and who is perfect knowledge itself. I salute Shiva, who is prior to Prakriti, who is calm and tranquil, the only excellent Purusha, who has created this visible universe, and who stays both within and without, like space. I salute Shiva, of unmanifest form, who, having extended himself by way of creation, stands in the middle of it, while the worlds move around him. Like iron filings round a magnet. Vyasa said, "I describe this after bowing to Shambhu, the father of the universe, Shiva, the mother of the universe, and Ganadisha, their son. Once Saunaka and other sages living in Nimisha forest inquired from Sutta with full devotion." The sages said, "The good and auspicious story of Vidyeshwara Sanghita has been heard by us. This first delightful compendium, titled On the Achievable and the Means of Achievement, is lovingly disposed to the devotees. Sutta, O oh blessed Sutta, live long, be happy. You will please narrate to us, O oh dear, the great anecdotes of Shiva." O sinless one, drinking the nectar of knowledge poured out from your lotus mouth, we are never satiated. Hence, we would like to inquire of you something more. O omniscient one, by the favor of Vyas, you have realized contentment. There is nothing unknown to you, whether of the past, present, or future. In return for your excellent devotion, you have gained the great favor of your preceptor Vyasa. You have understood everything. You have made your life highly noble and purposeful. Now, O oh wise one, please explain the excellent form of Shiva. Please narrate the divine anecdotes of Shiva and Parvati without omitting anything. Maheshwara is nirguna, free from attributes. How does he take up the saguna form in the world? We do not know the true nature of Shiva, despite great deliberations. Before the origin of creation, how does Lord Shiva maintain his form? In the midst of creation, how does he maintain his sport? How does Lord Maheshwar stand at the moment of dissolution? How is Shankara? Who blesses the world with happiness propitiated? What benefit does the great Lord confer when He is pleased with His own devotees and others? Please tell us. 
we have heard that the Lord becomes pleased instantaneously. The merciful Lord is unable to bear the stress and strain that his devotee undergoes. The three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh, are born of Shiva. Among them, Mahesh, when he has all the substrata of elements, is Shiva himself as distinct from Mahesh. Please explain his manifestation and tell us about his various activities. Please tell us about the birth of Uma and her marriage too, O Lord. Their domestic life and their divine sports shall also be narrated to us. O sinless one, please tell us all about it and anything else that should be told. Vyasa said, being thus requested, Sutta was delighted. Remembering the lotus-like feet of Shiva, he replied to the sages. Sutta said, O lordly sages, what you have asked is very nice. You are all blessed, inasmuch as your minds are drawn towards Sadashiva's anecdotes. Like the holy waters of the Ganga, inquiry into the anecdotes of Sadashiva sanctifies three types of persons the narrator, the inquirer, and the hearer. O Brahmanas, except for the slayer of animals, who can be averse to hear the narrative of the attributes of Shiva that highly delights three types of people always? When it is recited by persons who have no attachment or desire, it is verily an antidote for all elements of worldly existence, for it is highly delightful to the ear and the heart, while at the same time it bestows all objects. O Brahmanas, I shall explain Shiva's sports in the light of your inquiry, as far as my intelligence enables me to do so. Please listen respectfully. Induced by Lord Vishnu, a manifestation of Shiva, Narada had also put the same question you are asking me now to his father Brahma. On hearing the words of his son, Brahma, a devotee of Shiva, was delighted in his mind. Out of love he sang the glory of Shiva, heightening the pleasure of the excellent sage Narada. Vyasa said, On hearing the words of Sutta, the learned Brahmanas became eager to know more of that conversation, and so asked him, O Sutta, O blessed Sutta, of great intellect and foremost among the devotees of Shiva, on hearing your most delightful words, our minds have become very eager to know more. Dear one, please tell us lovingly when this highly pleasant conversation between Brahma and Narada took place, wherein Shiva's glory was sung and the divine sport of Lord Shiva, destructive of worldly existence, was discussed. What were the questions and how were they answered? Please explain. On hearing these words On hearing these words of the sages of noble mind, Sutta was much pleased, and narrated everything pertaining to the conversation between Brahma and Narada. <laughs> 